Hello everyone, today we are going to be discussing about Zygmunty's theorem. So this is actually a very cool, uh, it's actually a very cool theorem and uh, it's it's actually kind of like an uh, abridged version of the lifting the exponent lemma, the LTE lemma and we basically use that on cyclotomic polynomials. That's essentially how the Zygmunty's theorem was derived and yes, it actually has a lot of applications in algebra and number theory. So yeah, maybe let's just see one of them and how we can use in, it in math and periods. So this is the problem number one from the senior division of the European Mathematical Cup in 2012. And this particular problem was proposed by Matija Bucic. And in this video, we're going to be looking at Zygmunty's theorem's exception. So there is one exception to this theorem where it does not work. We're going to be discussing that and the statement of the theorem, what it says basically. After that, more importantly, the application of Zygmunty's theorem, how can we potentially use it in the math Olympiads? And after that, some book sessions for senior Olympiads, and at the end, a similar with charging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical Olympiads, physics Olympiads, computer science and informatics Olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so the goal is to find all positive integers a, comma b, comma n, and the prime p that satisfy this particular equation. That's actually really cool because here it's essentially what knowledge do I have? I have this 2013 power on both sides, and my objective would be to maybe reduce this power. Maybe I don't really like 2013. I can potentially reduce it something. Um, a good thing to probably note is that 2013 is actually 671 times 3. So you can somehow get rid of this 671. I can somehow reduce it maybe down to let's say x cubed plus y cubed is equal to p raised to power n. That would be pretty good, right? Because then this can be factorized as x plus y and then x squared plus y squared minus xy is equal to p raised to power n. And then this is something that we can deal with. We have seen such things before. So maybe we can work around with that. But in the current form, we have 2013 powers. We have a prime on the right hand side. It's quite interesting actually, but um, to kind of like draw this down to a simpler case, like I was mentioning over here, we need to use something called as the Zygmunty's theorem, right? Zygmunty's theorem. And yes, for those who have studied periodic valuations or um, the lifting the exponent lemma, LTE lemma, this is just like an advanced version of that you can say. So what does it state? It states this, right? If A is greater than B, greater than equal to one, right and m is a natural number then there exists a prime p such that p divides a raised to the power m plus b raised to the power n but p does not divide p does not divide a raised to the power k plus b raised to the power k for all k less than m let us give an example. So for example, let's consider a is equal to 5. Let's consider b is equal to 4. Let's maybe consider m is a natural number. Let's maybe consider m is equal to 2. So what is a raised to the power m plus b raised to the power m? This will be 5 squared plus 4 squared. That is 25 plus 16. It will be 41. So you can clearly see that p is equal to 41 is a prime that divides 41, right? 41 divides 41 indeed. So that's, that's uh, pretty much clear. But then the bio-segment is the limit states that p does not divide a raised to the power k plus b raised to the power k for all k less than m. And since these natural numbers, k would be 1. And we can see that indeed, 41 does not divide um, 5 raised to the power 1 plus 4 raised to the power 1. Right? 41 does not divide 9. So this is essentially the statement of the Zygmunty's theorem. And you can just play around with this a little bit, check maybe some more examples to kind of get a feel of it, how this works. But yeah, essentially, this is what Zygmunty's theorem says. But there is an exception to that. There is an exception to that. So what the Zygmunty theorem essentially states, what you need to remember is that if P divides A raised to power M plus B raised to power M, for M belongs to natural numbers and A greater than B, greater than equal to one, then that essentially means that P will not divide A raised to power K plus B raised to power K for K less than M, right? This is essentially the crux of it. If I just remove the words from it, this is what you need to kind of keep in mind. But there's an exception, right? There's an exception to this. The exception, the exception is a case that you can just kind of need to remember where a is equal to 2, b is equal to 1, and m is equal to 3. So if I just check a raised power m plus b raised power m over here, it would be 2 cube plus 1 cube, which is obviously 9. 
and if i just check for k is equal to maybe 1 k is less than m 1 is less than m that's definitely true i will get a raised power m plus b raised power m as 2 raised power 1 plus 1 raised power 1 which is actually 3 now the prime 3 the prime p is equal to 3 divides both this and this so basically p divides a raised power m plus b raised power m and the same prime p also divides a raised power k plus b raised power k for k less than m therefore this is a violation of Zygmunty's theorem this is a violation of Zygmunty's right Zygmunty so therefore this is a special case that you need to essentially remember right this this is just remember this case so this is the one and only exception of the Zygmunty's theorem right this thing a2 b1 and m3 a is equal to 2 b is equal to 1 and m is equal to 3 this is the only kind of exception of Zygmunty's theorem there are no other exceptions so yeah, so whenever you're solving, the, the, the kind of like the takeaway is whenever you're solving Zygmunty's theorem and you get to a point where the Zygmunty's theorem is not applicable, there might be two things. Very important, this is what I'm saying, there might be two things. One is that you're in an exception case. It's really easy to check, you just plug in the numbers. The other thing that might happen is that A is not greater than B. Here, we're saying that A is greater than B. If in a problem, when you're, when you're, applying, uh, when you're applying Zygmunty's theorem, Zygmunty's theorem does not work, P in fact divides A raised power K plus B raised power K for K less than M, then there are two possibilities. The first possibility is that you are in an exception case, and the second possibility is that A is not greater than B. But we are going to discuss that later as well, so not an issue. Now let's come back to the problem. So what do we have? We have A raised power 2013 plus B raised power 2013 is equal to P raised power N. Now we, we kind of like, the objective is pretty much clear right now to you, I guess. We somehow apply Zygmunty's theorem over here. But uh, yeah, let's maybe like work around a few steps before that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set D as the GCD of A comma B, right? I don't know if A comma B is a co-prime or not. It's possible that D is equal to one. They might as well be co-prime monos. But let me just assume that they're not, right? So D is the GCD of A comma B. So essentially, A becomes DX and B becomes DY. And basically from the definition of the GCD, GCD of X comma Y is obviously one. Right? That is why I'm writing this essentially. Right, so now that you've stated that, let me just replace this into the original equation. So I'll get dx raised to power 2013 plus dy raised to power 2013 is equal to p raised to power n. So essentially, d raised to power 2013 times x raised to power 2013 plus y raised to power 2013 is p raised to power n. Now the right hand side is a power of p, right? It's the power of the prime p. The left hand side also needs to be power of the prime p. Essentially, this needs to be a power of the prime p and this also needs to be a power of prime p. Essentially, I can write D is equal to P raised power R for some R less than or equal to N. Right? That's pretty much clear. Now, moving forward, what can we say next? So, if this is P raised power R, this is X raised power 2013 plus Y raised power 2013 is equal to P raised power N. So, basically, X raised power 2013 plus Y raised power 2013 is P raised power N minus 2013 R. This will actually be 2013 R. Sorry. Because you have this uh, 2013 in the power as well, right? So D raised power 2013 becomes P raised power 2013 R. Okay, that's great. Now, if you initially remember what I was telling about earlier is to kind of simplify this problem, we need to reduce this maybe uh, in, in the form of cubes, right? Because 2013 is 671 times 3. This is why I was referring to the cubes because maybe we can kind of like reduce this down. So if you actually notice, X raised power 671 times 3 plus Y raised power 671 times 3 is equal to P raised power N minus 2013 R. So basically, if I maybe like define a set of new variables such that maybe let's say z is equal to x is for 671, w is equal to y is for 671, and maybe if I define s as n minus 2013r, I'll get z cubed plus w cubed is equal to p is for s. Well, that's great because now I can factorize this. So z plus w, z squared plus w squared minus zw is equal to p is for s. So essentially, what we're seeing from here and here is that P divides Z cube plus W cube and additionally, P also divides Z plus W. So here we're actually seeing that it's a violation of Zygmunty's theorem, right? It is dividing A raised power M plus P raised power M, where M is 3. And here it's also the prime P. P is a prime, mind you. It's dividing A raised power K plus B raised power K, where K is 1. So this is a violation of Zygmunty's theorem, so there can be really only two cases. Case one, we are in our exception case. If you remember what was the exception case, it was something like 
2 cube plus 1 cube is equal to 9 and similarly 2 raised power 1 plus 1 raised power 1 is equal to 9 kind of applying that over here we will get z is equal to 2 and w is equal to 1 and um, obviously if we, if we kind of like apply this if z is equal to 2 what was z z was basically x is for 671 right from here but then again x is like really x is a natural number right x is an integer so any integer raised for 671 is equal to 2 is obviously not true therefore this this entire case is false we are not in our exception case the case 2 is that what i was saying earlier for the zygmundi's theorem there is a possibility that a is not uh, is not greater than b so that essentially leaves us with a is equal to b right that's the only other thing that may happen these are the only two kind of like things that may not satisfy for Zygmunt's theorem. So if A is equal to B, or in our case, we were applying the Zygmunt's theorem for Z and W, right? So in our case, Z is equal to W over Z, X is for 671, what was W, Y is for 671, and essentially then X is equal to Y. So what was A? A was DX, B was DY, X is equal to Y, D is equal to D, so obviously A is equal to B, that's great. Now, plugging a is equal to b into our original equation, what did we have? a is for this plus b is for this is equal to b is for n, right? If I just plug in a is equal to b over here, I'll get a is for 2013 plus um, a is for 2013 is equal to b is for n. So effectively, b is for n is two times a is for 2013. If you actually see the right hand side is even, so the left hand side also needs to be an even, and therefore p is two because it needs p. Essentially, the only even prime is 2. And if p is odd, so for example, if p is 3, 3 raised to the power any number will be odd. Or really, any odd number raised to the power n will always be odd. Let me just illustrate that through an example. For example, 5 square is odd, which is 25. 5 cube is also odd, which is 125. Effectively, p needs to be equal to 2. So we've got that one thing, right? We've got that p is equal to 2. That's great. Now, if you actually remember d, d was p, p raised power r let me just show you where this was d was p raised power r over here right d was p raised power r we assume that it's some some power of the prime p but now since p is equal to 2 d is essentially 2 raised to the power r now that's great now if you actually remember what we had said about the gcd of x comma y is actually equal to 1 and since y is equal to x this will be nothing but the gcd of x comma x the GCD of x comma x is obviously x and therefore x is equal to 1 therefore y is equal to 1. Now since x and y are 1 what was a? a is equal to dx b is equal to dy so therefore a is equal to b is equal to d and d was 2 raised to the power r. So we kind of get a, get a sense of it so if I just say a is equal to 2 raised to the power r b is equal to 2 raised to the power r p needs to be 2 what is left I just need to find the value of n right but that, was, that is what we had to find. We had to find a, b, p, and n in the original problem. I just need to find n. I just plug this back into the original equation. So, a is for 2013 plus b is for 2013 is equal to b is for n. Effectively, 2 is for 2013 r plus 2 is for 2013 r is equal to 2 is for n. So, essentially, 2 is for 2013 r times 2 is equal to 2 is for n. So, 2 is for 2013 r plus 1 is equal to 2 is for n. So therefore, n is equal to 2013r plus 1. And that essentially finishes our problem. So a is equal to 2 raised to the power r, b is equal to 2 raised to the power r, p has to be 2 always, and n has to be 2013r plus 1. So we have actually a family of solutions over here. So in terms of this parameter, which is called r. So we have an infinite number of solutions, obviously, and you just keep on plugging r, and it'll keep on getting the infinite number of solutions. So we have a family of solutions over here. So yeah, that was actually a really interesting problem of Zygmunt's theorem. And yeah, I hope you learned a little bit from it. Zygmunt's theorem is actually a very cool thing to apply. And it's actually very helpful. It's a pretty cool technique to know. Okay, so moving forward. So we have some book suggestions for APMO and Senior Olympiads. Mostly just focusing on number theory and algebra over here. IMO Compendium, great book, great problem solving book. Uh, polynomials by Barbeo and Elementary Number Theory by Sierpinski. There are also certain other books that you can follow. Um, elementary Number Theory by David Burton. Uh, problem Solving Strategies by Arthur and Jell. You know, both of these are really nice books, essentially for number theory and all. But uh, yeah, these three books are actually really good for number theory and algebra in general. Okay, so at the end, we have a similar but challenging problem. 
and I wanted to find the positive integer solutions to this given equation and p is a prime right p is essentially a prime and yeah maybe try and use Zygmunt's theorem over here this can be solved without Zygmunt's theorem as well but Zygmunt's theorem really simplifies this down a lot right so if you're able to solve it or if you're able to make any progress on it let me know in the comment section below and until then i'll see you in the next video thank you very much and bye bye in the programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics and they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training individual evaluation and remedial sessions the reason chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real olympiads from leading universities in india united states and europe some of our students come back to teach at chinta from oxford cambridge harvard mit ucla isi cmi iits tifr and iisc for more information visit chinta.com